Heard you had some trouble down there again Just call and I'll let you know that somebody understands I was once escorted through the doors of a clinic by a man In a bulletproof vest and no bombs It is a moral imperative that women be able to have uh, control over their own bodies and over their own lives and their reproductive freedom. And Dr. Tiller was somebody who really embodied that in his life and in his work. And in spite of death threats, in spite of being shot, in spite of uh, vandalism and bombings at his clinic, in spite of other reproductive health care workers being shot and even killed, he continued to do this important and vital work. He was one of the few doctors in the country who performed later term abortions, which is a vital service for women who are dealing with crisis pregnancies. The vast majority of the time they were wanted pregnancies that had gone tragically wrong, either due to the fetal health or maternal health that necessitated the termination of the pregnancy. And he was willing to perform that for them because he knew that it was something that was health care at its most primary that women needed. And we really honor his life and his memory and hope that his work will go on. On, uh, because it's needed and uh, women all over the country went to him for help because he was one of the few and now we have one fewer doctor who's willing to perform this often life-saving procedure for women. And the horror of the act, the violence in my chest and in my stomach and in my gut, it's just a real visceral feeling and this kind of execution without trial or without just this kind of of judgment coming from one human being to another, I guess, is why I'm here, that I'm totally against that kind of, of violence, and I I respect the words that I saw on the internet this week that George Tiller's motto was, trust women. I also go to a Lutheran church, and so it was very traumatizing to think of how um, having a death in a congregation um, would have affected me as a child growing up in a church or as a family member. And so um, I think it's very important for us to kind of witness this act of violence and reflect on it. Um, and reflect on kind of how much people give um, to take comprehensive care of women um, because uh, these people really need our support. I know he is a really important figure and I think it's important to honor somebody who's sacrificed their well-being for their value. How many people have the commitment to go through being shot in both arms, having your clinic bombed, and continue to provide the service, continue with that compassion and that level of commitment to those services. I feel like Dr. Tiller's murder was just a terrible moment where someone in this country forgot and other people in this movement have forgotten that there's real stories with real tragedies and they need real compassion and not just black and white and certainly not the addition of violence. So um, I'm hoping we can all learn to be more compassionate as a result of this tragedy. We have, we have public officials, we have politicians, we have media, people who just incite the violence and then want to have claim no responsibility for, for their words. You can't have it both ways. You can't, you can't say your words had nothing to do with it when you brag that you're so powerful through, because you reach millions of people through your television show or your radio show and that people listen to you and people follow what you tell them to do. So uh, that's to, to turn around then and say you don't think you had anything to do with it is a lie. Um, this, the, the, what, why this, um, the murder was, to me, um, sort of moved me to even come here tonight, aside from just be, believing so much in, in family planning and in a woman's um, uh, ability to, to choose her what's right for her, um, is I heard a story of a woman um, that is a friend of mine, the sister is a genetic counselor in New York City, and she was counseling a, a woman. And um, they found out that the baby had a terrible, terrible genetic defect, and and she was well over 22 weeks along, and was just beside herself, and apparently was something a truly horrendous um, genetic defect. And the woman was crying and didn't know what to do, and 
this this friend said, you know, I know a doctor and he's in Kansas and I think he can help you. And they got on the phone and talked to him. And they, apparently he is, you know, was really very helpful to her and said, yes, I can help you if you, if this is what you want to do, I'll be happy to, to, to take care of this. And um, a few days later, Tiller was killed. And so now this woman has no recourse. And it just, it made me hear something that um, is, is, is legal. It's, um, it's necessary, it's moral, and, and he's, now this woman can't get this care anymore, and it just, it just sort of just made me kind of sick to my stuff. Um, to grieve, to mourn the loss of one of the few, very few, courageous men who is willing to be there no matter what the circumstances are, whether we're talking about a nine-year-old who is impregnated, uh, whose body would be ripped apart by a full-term pregnancy, or whatever the circumstances might be. This man was willing to be there for the women, uh, no questions asked. And we're down to very few of, of people who are that courageous who will put their lives on the line. A bullet came to visit a doctor in his one safe place. A bullet had shown the right to life whizzed past his kid and his wife and knocked his glasses right off of his face and the blood poured off the pulpit yeah, and the blood poured down the picket line and the hatred was immediate